Hello everyone, in this new tutorial I will be showing you how to use the new cloth air pressure feature that has been added in Blender. I have tried to keep this tutorial simple, easy to follow, so let's start on this. First we are going to make a basic shape of our balloon. For this, press Shift A and add a UV sphere. Go into edit mode, rotate the view and select the bottom vertex. Press G and move it down. Now select the edge at the bottom and move it down also. Exit the edit mode and right click on the model and select smooth shade. Next, shift A and this time add a plane. Scale it up a little. It will be used as floor for our cloth collision. Now go into the physics tab and apply a collision modifier on the plane. Now select the balloon model and apply a cloth modifier. To see how our simulation of cloth looks, I will play the animation from the timeline. You can see our model falls down on the plane. I am reducing the total length of frames to 150 for this tutorial so the animation playbacks faster. Now we are going to turn on the pressure settings. I will first try a small number of pressure value. Let's start with 6. The model fills up with some air. I will add a more high value like 12 and you can see the model fills up with more air and starts to become rounded balloon type. Since we have a pointed end in the balloon model, it starts to move also from its position. Go into the edit mode, select the bottom last vertex, go into vertex group tab and assign this vertex a name. I am giving this vertex a name fix point, you can set any name. Click the assign button. Now go back to the physics tab. Below the pressure settings, there will be a setting called shape. Open it up. In the pin group, select the vertex group we just created. If we play the animation now, our balloon will fill up with air and no longer moves from the middle point. Now we are going to add some more interesting deformation to the model. In the shape settings, you can see shrinking factor. Go to the first frame in the timeline and then change this value to something like 0.75. Click the dot to add a keyframe. This property will basically make the balloon model to shrink in size at the very first frame. Now move in the timeline to about 60th frame and change the shrinking factor back to 0 and add another keyframe by clicking the dot. Play the timeline animation. You will see that our balloon is smaller in size at start, becomes bigger and fills up with air as the animation plays. But you will notice it falls on the side as it fills up. To make it straight, we are going to add a force field. For this, shift E, go into force field and select the type wind. It will be added just above the plane. Just change the strength to a higher value. I am using a strength value of 2000. Play the animation to see the effect. We are going to further refine the look of our balloon air filling sequence. In the pressure settings, change the factor value to 0. The factor value controls the amount of air pressure that is going to be in the model. Go to the first frame in the timeline and change the factor amount to 0. Add a keyframe at this position. Now move to the 60th frame and add another keyframe but this time using a value of factor amount 1. Play the animation. And you will see we have a deflated look at the start and it gets smoother as air fills in. You can also change the viewport matte cap 
to see the results more better. The next step is optional. I'm going to change the shape of our balloon model. For this, go into sculpt mode, press G to use the grab brush. Right click to reduce the strength and scale up the radius of the brush and simply move the sides to define the balloon shape. Exit the sculpt mode and let's see the animation. Add a subdivision modifier to smooth the model. If we go to the start of our animation, you will notice that the first few frames are not properly displaying the shape. That is because the cloth collisions are not yet calculated at those frames. Easy fix for this is simply to change the start frame to 5 so our animation starts from the bottom deflated look. Once you are satisfied with the result, go back in physics tab and in the cache menu, enter a frame rate you need to render. In this case, it will be up to 150 frames, click bake and that's it. You can also try different values of air pressure and your model will become either more rounded or deflated. One thing to note is that your model should be one single piece for using air pressure setting otherwise you may experience different parts floating around. Just by using different settings for air pressure, force field, you can get some really interesting results. And this completes the tutorial. I hope you find this useful in some way. If you have any suggestions or requests, let me know in the comments below and I will be happy to reply. If you like the content of this video, be sure to subscribe and like to see more future content. Thank you very much everyone. See you in the next video.